So this here is just a tiny little snippet of the Maker Tales Academy course, how to use Blender for 3D printing. I hope you enjoy. Considering this whole course is about how to use Blender for 3D printing, I really feel like we should go over the fundamentals of 3D printing. Now hear me out, I know many of you know 3D printing, but we just need to go over some key crucial precision aspects of it. So with 3D printing, filament comes in, it gets heated out and it comes out the other end. While it gets heated up, it usually comes in as 1.75 millimeters, then it gets extruded down through the nozzle. Let's take a look at this in a little bit more of a precise manner. So taking a closer look at 3D printing through the lens of precision, what we're interested in is the nozzle diameter. Most nozzle diameters come at default of 0.4 millimeters, and this is referring to that little hole right there. Now this is important because when this plastic that's melted comes squirting out the other end and then gets squished on the build plate, it's gonna come out just a little bit wider than the hole that it came out from. Now this width is called the extrusion width and it's quite important when we're talking about precision modeling. Now there's one other dimension that's quite important which is the height of this plastic. This is called the layer height because as we 3D print we're going to stick these layers on top of one another and this is FDM. It can also be called FFF. FDM stands for Fused Deposition Modeling and FFF stands for Fused Filament Fabrication. Now most of us might already know that you can't just throw anything into a 3D printer. It needs to be sliced up into these layers and all the settings that your printer is going to use to print it. These programs are called slicers. Now there's two main free slicers out there that I use, which they're called Prusa Slicer and Cura Slicer. Now I'm not gonna go over all the settings that are inside of a slicer, but I just wanna show you the overall feel of a slicer and what it does. So here we are inside of Prusa Slicer. The main job of a slicer is to throw in a bit of 3D model geometry, get it sliced up through all the settings and whatnot that you've set up in here, and then you can see it that both the extrusion width and the layer height come together to create a 3D model. Now all of these changes of layer changes and all of that is then sent to the printer in something called G-code. Now I wanna pull back the layers here and just show you something important. The two main areas that we need to worry about when it comes to design is the inside and the outside of a model. The inside is called the infill and is usually filled up with some sort of a grid and the outside is made up of a couple of walls and these walls are called the perimeters. Now both the inside and the outside and everything to do with 3D printing has a whole bunch of settings but unfortunately that is outside of the scope of this course because we are focusing laser focused onto the design of 3D printing itself. Speaking of which, there is the number one consideration that everything to do with 3D print design is focused around. And that is the idea that you cannot print in and to thin air. Let me explain this a little bit better. So this printing in and to thin air becomes pretty obvious when we're talking about a model like this. If we were to get this sliced up, it becomes pretty blatant that this is not gonna work without any type of support right here. In fact, this is what would happen. As you've seen, that basically means that the filament is printing to nothing and completely in thin air. So this is the problem in an overview or a macro sense in the big picture. Now you might have heard of the rule of 45 degrees when you're designing for 3D printing. This is the exact same problem right there. Let me explain how. Going back to our earlier example here, now we have our perimeter wall right here. So taking this look on the side, if we have a model that has a 45 degree angle and we need to follow this through our layer heights, what's gonna happen to our layer heights? Well, they're going to shift a little bit to meet that line. So this is the outside edge of a 3D model. Now, the way that you can see that this 45 degree is achieved is a little bit of the outer perimeter 
is stacked on top of the outer perimeter of the layer underneath. Now this doesn't mean you can't go past 45 degrees. In fact, you can see that I could probably push this quite a little bit further, just going to probably just about there. Now there comes a point that it can no longer do that. So this point here is the point that a 3D model would completely fail because the outer perimeter wall of the one that's on top and the one in bottom just have nothing to support upon one another. Again, we're printing into thin air. And that is the main primary fundamental basics of 3D printing for now. If you found that interesting and would like to deep dive on how to use Blender for 3D printing along with learning 3D print design, go and sign up to my course using Fundamental 3D30 and the first 30 of you are gonna get 30% off. Now that core principle that you've just seen really does apply to absolutely everything to do with 3D printing, even resin printing except almost upside down. It's a little bit complicated. Now this was just a little taster of my how to use Blender for 3D printing course. And if you're interested to find out more, I'd love it if you go check out the course. You really do learn Blender from zero all the way to some pretty complicated modeling through 10 practical 3D printing projects where you basically learn 3D print design and Blender at the same time. Now, this is very much precision modeling in Blender and this is not CAD Sketcher. If you're interested in CAD Sketcher, what I've just done right now is I've got a new tier under my Patreon where I'm gonna be putting my work in progress tutorials of CAD Sketcher, teaching you my CAD Sketcher workflow over there. So if you're interested in that, go and sign up for that there. It's only about seven bucks a month. If you're interested in learning about CAD Sketcher before anywhere else, but don't worry here on Maker Sales, I'm still going to be using CAD Sketcher in my projects, showing you how I use it, as well as doing the update videos still here. I have to do that. If not, I'm literally killing my channel with CAD Sketcher videos, just because they become so out of date so quickly. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. A big thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing. Without you, I truly would would not be able to make Maker Tales. And if you're enjoying what I'm making here and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.